Yeah, I've been in uh, organizational development, organizational improvement for quite a while now, and I uh, have been wondering about this optimization, process improvement, um, making things more smooth, making things flow better, making things more predictable. Is this actually all there is to it? And uh, I think it was two years ago when I discovered a book that's called Anti-Fragile, you might have heard of it. And uh, it's an interesting idea of creating systems that grow when they are under pressure, no? uh, which is quite normal in nature, but it's uh, not happening in the way we structure organizations, most organizations. And uh, I've been thinking about this, and I like positive terms. Anti-fragile is not really something that you can do because it's defined as a negative term. And uh, quite recently, I think around Christmas or a few weeks before, I came up with a new term, which is called surprisability. Surprisability. <laughs> so the idea is that we create organizations that A, are able to grow with surprises, so they're very surprisable, and they surprise the environment. So instead of just surfing the waves of complexity, they actually make the waves, right? Not chasing the market, but making the market. Um, moving the market. And uh, since I came up with that term and started connecting this to the kind of leadership that we're developing here, um, I was thinking about what does it actually mean that an organization is surprisable? A, I think it means that the organization is very, very present, that everybody is paying a lot of attention and that people are quite open in what they notice and what they are daring and allowed to speak up about. So that everybody who sees something interesting something weird, something out of the order, is actually noting that, not blind to it because of some optimization filter that is in place, noticing it with a very open mind and talking about it so that people can see, oh, this is actually an interesting opportunity. Because in a complex world, many things that are new are not easily detected by our standard patterns, this also means that we are allowed to follow our intuition follow our emotions, because they are inside ourselves the weak signals that we can use to actually see, hmm, this doesn't feel good, maybe we should analyze the risks of this move, or, wow, this is exciting, maybe there's something in this that we haven't really figured out, let's try, right? So uh, driving this experimental culture that you were talking about with this openness and uh, sensitivity throughout everyone in the organization. So. Agility is a big part in it, uh, with a sense of experimentation, a sense of purpose, an intention, a uh, feeling of value, so that whenever something new happens, something exciting happens, or we discover some new opportunity, we can tie it back to the purpose of our organization, the current intention in the market, the value that we're generating for our clients. So we have this level of awareness, what is right and what is wrong, right? Similarly to a human being who is uh, like wholehearted and has good values that in a new kind of situation they will know to do what's right, right, without following the rules, just feeling, okay, this is the right way forward. And I would like to see that in an organization, that we know what is coherent with our thinking, what is coherent with our um, intention, what is coherent with our purpose. And that's why I think our work that we're doing here the spaces <coughs> we are creating in Temenos is useful to help organizations become more surprisable so that we can create spaces as leaders where everybody has a voice, where everybody has all their senses out there to recognize what's happening or what we could make happen and then actually has the space to be listened to, to make a wave and to create something cool and new that is surprising the world. Thank you.